Okay, welcome to uh, video three for the Vietnam War. Um, hopefully we answered any questions you might have uh, yesterday with our, our Zoom conference. Feel free to post anything on uh, our discussion board. Uh, tomorrow we'll probably have a Zoom conference, but it's gonna be a little bit more organized where the first couple of minutes, uh, 15, 20 minutes, we'll address anything that you have on Vietnam or on homework. Um, the next 15 minutes, we'll discuss where we want to go with this class over the next week. Uh, and then the final uh, part will be anything you want to ask about current events or anything outside of that. But we'll be a little bit more structured with our Zoom conference tomorrow. Um, yesterday, just kind of getting our feet wet, feet wet with understanding with what we're doing. Uh, so tomorrow will be a little bit more structured. We'll maximize our time. Uh, probably going to be early afternoon with that. But once again, I'm attending a, a virtual clinic right now. So uh, I'm trying to learn a little bit as well. Today, we're going to try to do a, a couple of different things um, with our screen share. So uh, hopefully it works. Um, the big question that a lot of you are going to have is uh, what's going to be my responsibility with this video? So here's the deal. I'm going to post a question or a couple of questions on Google Classroom. Uh, it's going to be open response. Respond to them. That'll be your homework for today. Not long, uh, but I, I do need your response on that. Okay, so when we left yesterday, uh, we were looking at North Vietnam, South Vietnam, and if I can get this to work. There we go. We we're looking at North Vietnam and South Vietnam as established by the Geneva Accords. A reminder that after World War II, they had split the country, and Geneva Accords said it's going to be split until a, an election in 1956. But that didn't exactly happen. A reminder, the North is led by the communist leader, Ho Chi Minh, and the South is by Ngo Dinh Ziem. And uh, Ziem's a skilled politician. Uh, he's going to be an ally of the United States, uh, but he's not exactly going to do everything that the United States asked of him. Uh, he's eventually going to become a corrupt dictator. A reminder that he didn't follow the uh, lessons or the agreement of the Geneva Accords, and he eventually does uh, have an election in 1955, which was one year earlier than it was supposed to be, and that keeps the nation of Vietnam split. The North, led by Ho Chi Minh, supported by the Soviet Union and China, and the South, and I should also add the French here, but I didn't, uh, supported by uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower, and they're also can, uh, supported by the, uh, the French, which is an American ally of this time. A reminder that Joseph Stalin did pass away in 1953, and he's replaced with the leader Nikita Khrushchev. Now, we've already looked at Khrushchev because Khrushchev was the leader during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, he's the guy that Kennedy eventually uh, has a showdown with over nuclear arms in Cuba. Okay, so today's lesson. Let's look a little bit at ZM. Um, Go Dean ZM, once again, Roman Catholic. Uh, the majority of the population is Buddhist. And when he becomes a leader in 1955 uh, by an election, our president, Dwight Eisenhower, isn't exactly sure of uh, how much we should support him. Uh, but a reminder that, that Truman gave aid in 1950, and Eisenhower increased our financial support to the French. Uh, but once the Geneva Accords comes about and ZM has control of the South, Eisenhower is not exactly sure how much he should support him. Um, when ZM is the leader, he promotes that it's going to be a democracy. And in the United States, we have that view of our First Amendment rights, freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of assembly. And ZM doesn't allow that. Uh, he denounces communism, which we do support that. Uh, but with denouncing communism, we're also taking away freedom of speech. And what ZM will do is he'll have thousands of communists jailed in South Vietnam. He'll have hundreds that are killed, uh, which is not exactly the democracy or the freedoms that most Americans had envisioned in Vietnam. Now, once again, a reminder, not a lot of Americans are paying attention to Vietnam. yet. Uh, it's not a major conflict until we see some religious disputes. Uh, later in this lesson, but not a lot of Americans are paying attention. Um, ZM limits the freedoms, and as a result, the leader of North Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh, 
is going to get pretty aggressive with an insurgency into the South, meaning uh, they're going to fight guerrilla warfare, try to do whatever they can to prevent ZM from having too much power or favor of the people. Eventually, during this insurgency, Americans are killed. And in July of 1959, the first Americans are killed in Vietnam. And we're going to try to watch this clip right now. So I've got to go through a, a little bit of a process right now of muting my mic and, and changing the screen uh, that I'm sharing. So uh, hold with me right now. By 1959, Le Zuan and his hardline allies were gaining influence within the North Vietnamese Politburo. Le Zuan, who they mention there, is Ho Chi Minh, North Korea's uh, leader, his, their top assistant. ...and beginning to change its policy. They now argued that Hanoi should do everything within its power to help Southern revolutionaries remove ZM by force. The North Vietnamese adopted a more aggressive posture. They did not accept the division of the country as such, and they would like to have the country reunified again at any cost. Now, bands of 40 to 50 armed Viet Minh began slipping back home into South Vietnam, following jungle paths hacked through the Laotian mountains that the Americans would soon call the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Violence against the ZM regime steadily accelerated. On the evening of July 8th, 1959, at Bien Hoa, 20 miles northeast of Saigon, six American military advisors were watching a movie in their mess hall. Viet Minh guerrillas who had crept silently into the compound opened fire through the windows. Major Dale Bice from Pender, Nebraska, and Master Sergeant Chester Avnand from Copperas Cove, Texas, were killed. They were the first American soldiers to die from enemy fire in the Vietnam War. We must prove all over again to a watching world, as we stand on a most conspicuous stage, whether this nation, conceived as it is, with its freedom of choice, its breadth of opportunity, its range of alternatives, can compete with the single-minded advance of the communist system. On November 8, 1960, John Fitzgerald Kennedy was elected President of the United States. His Vice President was Senator Lyndon Johnson. They had narrowly beaten Vice President Richard Nixon and his running mate, Senator Henry Cabot Lodge. During the campaign, both Kennedy and Nixon had pledged to hold the line against international communism, wherever it seemed to be a threat. But very few Americans knew or cared about what was going on in Vietnam. Six weeks after Kennedy's election, at a remote jungle village called Tun Lop, near the Cambodian border, representatives of Southern revolutionary groups met to form a new organization to replace the Viet Minh, dedicated to overthrowing No Ding Ziem and ousting the foreigners supporting him. Behind the scenes, Le Zuan and his communist comrades in Hanoi were orchestrating everything. The new organization would be called the National Liberation Front, the NLF. The armed wing of the NLF was called the People's Liberation Armed Forces, 
but its enemies in Saigon and Washington preferred a more disparaging term. In their eyes, the revolutionaries were communist traitors to the Vietnamese nation, the Viet Cong. Okay, so what we see here is a growing desire in the South um, to remove ZM. And as word gets out that ZM is becoming a little bit more corrupt, uh, he's not exactly allowing freedoms, uh, the Viet Minh, later on known as the Viet Cong, become more aggressive in the southern part of Vietnam and it becomes an insurgency. Now mentioned in that clip was the fact that six Americans were ambushed uh, in, the, the, in July of 59. And uh, these were the first two Americans killed in Vietnam. They were advisors that were sent over by our government. Now, if you've ever been to Washington, DC, you can go and see a list of all Americans that were killed in Vietnam it's what's known as the Vietnam Wall. And uh, here's the larger picture of the wall. It uh, just goes on and on and on. And uh, standing watch to protect those who had fallen are these soldiers who are uh, right across the way. It's very, very eerie if you ever go early in the morning or later in the evening. Uh, but each name of an American who passed away in Vietnam is on that wall. And uh, when you travel with some people who lived during that time, it's likely that they know at least one individual uh, who's on that wall. Uh, so if you ever go to Washington, D.C., I, I highly encourage you to take some time. Uh, it's off the, the mall. It's near the Lincoln Memorial uh, that you go see this memorial. Uh, on the Vietnam Wall, there are 58,320 names. And those two individuals who were killed in July of 1959 were the first Americans that were killed. Also mentioned in that clip is that JFK has been elected. Uh, all of his top advisors are World War II veterans. And the key lesson that he learned from World War II and his top advisors learned from World War II uh, with what we saw with appeasement to Adolf Hitler, uh, and remember JFK's father was a supporter of appeasement, uh, is that ambitious dictators must be stopped. And they must be stopped before they become a threat to world peace. And JFK in 1960, uh, he's 43 years old. He's our younger, youngest president to ever be elected. He, he's a Roman Catholic, not, always, not really accepted by a, a lot of the population because of that. He's our only Roman Catholic president uh, to this point in history. And early on, as mentioned in the, the video, he said that he was going to hold communism where it was at, meaning he was going to follow the Truman Doctrine, and that he wasn't going to allow communism to spread. But early on, JFK had a really rough presidency, a reminder that we had the failed invasion of the Bay of Pigs, uh, designed by Eisenhower, tried to be executed by JFK, but eventually there's too much miscommunication for it to be successful. Uh, he has some showdowns with the leaders, the new leader of the Soviet Union, uh, Nikita Khrushchev, and it's now a nuclear age against the Soviets. The Berlin Wall was built to separate Berlin uh, to the east and west. And uh, he felt that early on in his presidency, JFK was really losing when it came to his war against communism. A lot of individuals criticized JFK early in his presidency. Uh, he's only 43 years old. He's, he's too immature. Uh, he's indecisive. He's inadequate. And uh, that will stay with JFK for the rest of his presidency until November of 1963. Uh, but a reminder, not a lot of Americans are paying attention to Vietnam. They're paying more attention to home. And at home, we have the civil rights movement. Here's where we have uh, the desegregation of schools. We have uh, Martin Luther King Jr. being very active uh, in the civil rights movement. So a lot of people are focused on what's going on at home, and they're not really focused on what's going on in Vietnam. And uh, many individuals didn't even know exactly what the United States was doing in Vietnam during that time. Uh, when Kennedy is elected, a reminder that Ho Chi Minh is the leader in the North. And Ho Chi Minh, once again, all the way back to 1918, 
wanted Vietnam to be unified. And he wanted the Vietnamese people to rule themselves. And in 1960, he's the leader of North Vietnam and he's communist. He's allied himself with these communists. And he wants to remain patient to try to work out a, a deal with ZM. But his top assistants aren't really that uh, patient. And some of his top assistants are calling for violence against uh, South Vietnam. And, and that violence becomes the, the Viet Cong and they start to fight guerrilla warfare. In the South, ZM, he's not connected at all with his people. Uh, he's living in the palace. He's removed from the people. There's some uh, unbelievable quotes from his sister-in-law uh, about we don't need the American liberty. We don't need the American way of life. And in, in South Vietnam, we see that there's guerrilla warfare being fought against the uh, ARVN, uh, A-R-V-N, which would be the army of uh, the Vietnam Republic uh, of what we would call South Vietnam. So there's a, almost a civil war going on in the South and it's being incited by Ho Chi Minh's uh, assistance from the North. To protect the South Vietnamese citizens from uh, Viet Cong insurgencies, uh, there's a strategic hamlet program that was enforced by this gentleman to the North. That's Ngo Dean Nhu. Um, and that is D ZM's brother. And he was the guy that came up with this plan. What they were going to do is everybody in the rural communities of Vietnam in South Vietnam, were going to be forced to live into a community. And as you can see here from this overhead picture, there's going to be walls, there's going to be a moat, uh, there's going to be a way to protect them. So what they were trying to do is to make sure that the rural communities would not be victims to Viet Cong attacks. Well, eventually what happens is that a lot of people that were forced to move off their land, they start to resent this individual uh, because he forced them to move. And if you're a part of a democracy and you're sp supposed to give people individual rights, you can't really force them to move. And this plan, uh, it was a, a plan that the French actually enforced in Vietnam when they were leading the country. So it's also a, a reminder of what it was like to have an outside leader. Uh, Ngo Dean uh, New becomes somewhat corrupt, and uh, this is his wife below, and uh, we'll mention her a little bit later. In the north, Ho Chi Minh, he grew a beard, so he looked older. Now, one thing, if you ever study Chinese culture and you study Vietnamese culture, is that the Vietnamese honor the elderly, so he wanted to look older. And in all of his propaganda, he was named Uncle Ho, so he's a, a family guy. And there's all these pictures that are coming out with children sitting on his lap and him giving uh, children hugs and reading to kids and holding hands with kids. He, he, he didn't have a family himself, but he called himself Uncle Ho, and that way he became more of a connected elderly figure for those individuals in North Vietnam. As ZM and his brother are becoming less popular in the South with the, the Vietnamese people, Uncle Ho is becoming more popular with his population. In the summer of 1962, Ho Chi Minh traveled to China and he visited with this gentleman, Mao Zedong, and Mao Zedong promised that he would help North Vietnam against what they believed would be an inevitable war against the United States. Okay, when we come back for video four, we will look at North Vietnam becoming more aggressive. And the Viet Cong on January 2nd of 1963 finally have some success against US helicopters and it will give them uh, the confidence and the, uh, the arrogance, the belief that they can defeat the large American army, but only if they do this with guerrilla warfare and with sneak attacks. So when we come back for video four, we will look how the United States uh, tries to counter this guerrilla warfare, uh, and we'll also start to notice that the United States population is going to get a little bit more involved when ZM becomes a little bit more.